How was basic training for you? Like, what was it like? What was the things you had to go through? Was it vigorous? Was it kind of simple? What was it like? It was mind over matter the whole time. Like, the whole mm. time I was there, I was just thinking, like, you here for a reason. Because it was your sergeant's going to try you. Like, they break you down to build you back up. So. Deprogram to reprogram. Yeah. Yeah. We are here. What to do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your day by day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with the I, not a Y, do not X, Y. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I have a treat for y'all because we are joined by a jack of all trades. That's me. Recording artist, U.S. soldier. You heard me right. And licensed, emphasis on the licensed cosmetologist. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Chessy Ree. What it do? Big Chessy Ree, the biggest, the largest. <laughs> the largest, grande. I don't know any other languages for big, but y'all get the picture. She here. What's up, though? How are you? I'm doing good, actually. Mm -hmm. Feeling good. Glad you invited me out here. Of course, of course. I'm glad you. I'm. I'm glad you was straight to it. I'm glad you was straight with it because, like we was talking about earlier, people be bluffing. Yeah, they really do. Like we lined this up a day after reaching out, and really? that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, are you from Charlotte? I'm actually from Gaston, North Carolina. I got family in Charlotte. Like my dad's side of the family is from Charlotte, so I kind of grew up in both. He from here in Valley. My mama from Mountain View and Gaston. So, but I went to school in Gaston. So okay. I just say I'm from Gaston because that's too much explaining to be doing. So, but I'm from Gaston and Charlotte. That I makes think. sense. Well, let's get straight into it. Like I said, jack of all trades, recording artist, U.S. soldier. For those who don't know, that means army. So let's start there. Um, you know, there's technically a war going on. I don't know the facts to it, so I don't want to speak on it because I, you know, just want to go around my ignorance as far as to that. But I do want to start with the U.S. Army. Um, first and foremost, what made you want to join the army? Honestly, I wasn't one of them, like, G.I. Joe, like, oh, I want to go put my life on the line. Mm -hmm. I joined for the benefits. If we're keeping it a beam, they Please come with do. great benefits. Yeah. I ain't want to go, like, you know. Shit, that's why I ain't left my full-time job. It's a sin, for real, to be, you know, to a extent, it's a sin to support the government, go out there and kill and stuff like that. But I ain't joined to kill and stuff. Mm -hmm. I joined... For the benefits. What like what makes the the military benefits so luxurious? Because I have heard mm -hmm. of multiple people join just because of the benefits. Right. So they pay for you to go to school. They pay for like after you've been in for a certain amount of time, you get a um it's called a VA home loan. So yeah. they give you a home loan that you don't have to pay back. So, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, my man's ran that up. Oh man, my little brother, he just um he's in the Navy. He joined recently. Mm -hmm. He finished basic training a couple months ago and he's actually stationed in Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh yeah. Oh he lit. lit. I'm not gonna lie, like that's dope. Like I wanted to go active. My first contract was actually active. Mm -hmm. But uh when I went to MEPS, the um military enlisting station mm -hmm. up here in Charlotte, mm -hmm. they temporarily disqualified me for a piercing, so they told me, give me time to let the piercing close. And when I went back up there, I changed my contract from active to reserves. But okay. So you reserved. Yeah. So what's that mean exactly? That mean that I go once a month mm. and then two weeks out the summer. And then sometimes we get deployed for nine months. Like actually in June of next year, we're supposed to be going to Poland for nine months. Poland? Yeah. I took the WAP to Poland. Yeah. Little nice. Yachty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do, do you listen to Yachty? I do. Yeah. I mean, like. I forgot the name of um, his album back in the day when he had the red hair and the beads. I was like a freshman in high school. A little old. When did you graduate high school? 2000. I graduated early 2018, December 2018. Okay. So this is like 2015 you're talking? Type. Um, now, see, when Yachty, for, I'll, I'll say this about Yachty. For the longest, I've disregarded Yachty. I never wanted to hear anything that had to do with Yachty. Like, any anything that was Yachty, I'm like, I would just throw it out the trash because I'm a 90s baby. Like, I, I'm heavily influenced by 90s hip-hop, um, New York hip-hop. So it's like, lyrics is important to me. Yeah. With that being said, um, the song I played earlier, The Missing Recipe or The Secret Recipe with him and J. Cole, Yachty impressed me. 
And I think he had to because he was on the track with Cole. Yeah, he had no other choice. Yeah. You fuck with Cole? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I really do. Like, his lyrics be deep, and mm-hmm. sometimes you'll miss it if you ain't paying attention. Like, mm-hmm. he really the GOAT, for real. He really the GOAT. Talk about it. I don't know. No what? other artist you can compare to him. What makes him the Maybe, GOAT? Maybe um, Drake, but his lyrics. Drake and Kendrick. Yeah, Drake and Kendrick. It's always like those three. Yeah. You know what I mean? What makes Cole the GOAT out of those three? Because, like, first of all, he's from North Carolina. You already fucking know it. Two six. He from shout, North Carolina. Shout out to the Vale. Shout out to all my homies from the Vale. Real ones. I know some real ones from the Vale. I forgot the name of the drive. Forest Hills Drive. Forest Hill Drive. Yeah. yeah. Twenty fourteen. Forest Hills. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That's what make him a go. And then his lyrics just so meaningful. And yeah, I did some research on him. He went to school to be a. I don't know. He went to school for that shit. So. For like what? Like words like, type yeah. shit. Type shit. Well, like, ph- oh, okay. So, like, philanthropist. <laughs> Philanth- ph- what's the word? Philanthropist type shit. Yeah. 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 He went to school in New York. I think he still is out there, but he went to school in New York. Um, That's what he was living in Queens. I'm not sure what school he went to. Maybe St. John's. I don't know. What's Y'all could tell us. But, um, and so he had that influence mixed with the Southern influence. So, I think he definitely had that New York influence, which, which was just perfect. Like I said, I'm heavily 90s New York influence when it comes to hip hop. So I think that's like the perfect recipe to be mixed with someone like Cole. So I think he's the co- the GOAT to today, especially as of lately. He's been on features going crazy, kind of similar to Lil Wayne in like 07, 08 yeah. type shit. Like, and then like with that All My Life with Dirt, mm-hmm. that's about like, um, that's a banger. I mean, the kids yeah. love that. My little sister, she four years old. She be seeing that like she know like all the words. And it made me think about the Jay Z John the one when they be like hard um, knock life, hard knock life. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a method to every madness. It's a reason they did that. They knew what they was doing. They knew what audience they were trying to reach with that. You know yeah. what I mean? And it made sense. It made sense. They definitely had to do it. That's a good parallel you did with that and hard knock life. I never yeah. thought about that. Yeah, that's a good it's parallel. A lot of big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, real quick, back to the army. Um, so, do you ever plan on going like active? Actually, I thought about it. Mm-hmm. It's just like with me being a hairstylist and stuff, I would have to put that on pause. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't build my clientele up and stuff. It's people that come like every month, so I have to explain to them. I'll be gone for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I actually have thought about it. Yeah. And I don't know. I like being not on orders twenty four seven. So. I don't know. So how does that work? Can you stay reserved like for the rest of your tenure with them? Yeah. Okay, and still receive the benefits. <laughs> My contract actually uh six years and then two years after that. I won't be I won't have to go every month after my six year contract is up. I got two more. I got two more. Two more oh, two more into the six years? Yeah. How old are you? I'm twenty two. I just turned twenty two. Just turned twenty two. Okay, so you joined early. Yeah. Okay. Fresh out of high school. Nice. But I'm actually thinking about re-enlisting. Like, I'm trying to do 20 and get my rank up a little bit. Uh-huh. And, yeah, I don't know. During those, when I re-enlist, I might go active. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I might not. I don't know. That's interesting. I got a lot of stuff going. I like. I got a lot of stuff going on on my civilian side. So it's just like, I don't know. You're still trying to find that fine balance. And Probably you know at one point you're going to have to choose one right. or the other to put priority or, yeah. you know, prioritize. So, like, with the um, deployment stuff, that'll probably just be my active time. Like, probably just go on deployments and stuff. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of stuff going on on my civilian side. So. Okay. I mean, well, listen, I'll say it's a good plan as far as the benefits. My brother, when he told me the benefits, like, he, uh, listen, if you told me you received three, what is it, three meals a day? Mm-hmm. If you're active, three, oh, yeah. three free meals a day. I'm not going to lie. That food be busting. Too. That's all I need. I don't care if it's busting or not. I'm crushing. And then it's like, bro, that, I ain't going to lie. That food got me thick. Not going to lie. I was a little skinny mini and it got protein. I think it had like fiber in it. Yeah. <clears throat> we used to be running back from the defect to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> but it used to like get us hefty. You know, they had to yeah. feed us good. They want their soldiers yeah, to be strong. Yeah, you got to be. You got to right? feed us. You got to be like 300. But you got to be a thing, shield. They, um. Uh, they charge us for that shit about three hundred dollars a month. But shit, that's better. Well, let's see, is three hundred better than groceries? 
I got I got a I got a plug on a food stamp, so I'm trying to think. So if I didn't have one, three really they charge you in a month? I thought it was free. I thought it was completely nah, free. they take it out your check. I've been bamboozled. Um <laughs> three hundred a month ain't bad. That's not bad. For three meals a day, yeah. That's not bad. Right. That's really not bad. Like that's not, you can easily spend a hundred dollars a week on groceries. Right. Three hundred a bad three hundred a month ain't bad. Every day you getting three meals a day, that ain't bad. And Cause like I you spend s- that like if I as if I get side, I go buy some wings or some you yeah. know, fast food every day right. that shit add up. Right, right. And then um can you like take some shit to go? I'm the type I'm pulling <laughs> oh, up yeah. with a, I'm pulling up with a You with can, a, they got little to go boxes. Tupperware. They got like little stuff that's wrapped up and stuff. Yeah. But mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. if you like in basic training or AIT trade doc, that's like schooling before you become like a real soldier in the right. military. Right. It's called contraband if you have like food and stuff mm-hmm. in your barracks. Yeah, during basic training, yeah. So my brother, he did basic training, 75 days, right? Mm-hmm. Um he did basic training, he said it was real strict. You can really do nothing or bring nothing. Um but Afterwards, like where he's at now, it's like, you know, in Hawaii, it's like, okay, bet. It's, yeah. it's time to get the head to ground. It's like right? permanent duty station. Yeah. How was basic training for you? Like, what was it like? What was the things you had to go through? Was it vigorous? Was it kind of simple? What was it like? It was mind over matter the whole time. Like, the whole yeah. time I was there, I was just thinking, like, you're here for a reason. Because if you're starting going to try you, like, come on now. I ain't going to lie. Like, they break you down to build you back up. So... Deprogram to reprogram. Yeah. yeah. And then the physical part, like I never was, I mean, I was athletic in high school, like conditioning for cheerleading and stuff. I ran track, mm-hmm. played basketball, yeah. but that, that stuff right there was different. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Really? You made it through though. Yeah, I did. I'm proud of myself <laughs> for making it through. Yeah. But hey, listen, cheers to it. You made cheers it through. To that, Cause listen. I mean, everybody ain't built for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I personally know some people that haven't made it. And then my brother, once he went through basic training, he was telling me the stories about plenty of people that don't make it for whatever reasons, whether it's physical, psychological. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not sweet. Like you don't just show up and be like, okay, I'm gonna knock this out and get it over with. Like yeah. it's yeah, it's they gotta push a mind you through some thing. shit. Like, mm-hmm. not gonna lie, like the thing, J Cole. Sh- I mean, not J Cole. I'm tripping. K Camp. Shout out to K Camp because he helped me get through basic training. Mm. <laughs> How so? Because he got this song where he say, I forget the name of the song, but he be like, keep going, keep going, don't stop, grind hard till you hit the top. One day your shit gonna pop. And we used to go on like these little ruck marches. Like we used to walk like. 24 miles with like 40 pounds on our back and our weapon with full gear, bulletproof vest. And that shit used to, we walking up hills and shit. Like, I'm just like, I'm singing that song the whole way. Mm-hmm. Like, and I used to just sing it. Like, keep going. Yeah. One day your shit gonna pop. Like, yeah. yeah. I love that type of shit. I love hearing that. That yeah. is hard. I love hearing that, man. Yeah, again, shout out for you making it through. I appreciate I mean? it. Yeah, for sure. Because... Like you said, it's mind over matter. And like when your mental is challenged before your physical, that's much more difficult than your physical being challenged before your mental. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because your mental wants to tell your brain literally is trying to tell you to stop. Yeah. And you have to fight that shit. You have mm-hmm. to fight your own brain. You have to have a battle with yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what's up. Uh, with the military, it seems like people get married quick. Oh, <laughs> In the military. Yeah. Like, what? what's that about? And have you, like, what? I mean, I talked about it. I done had conversations with my battle buddies and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's that about? Like, what type of conversation have you had around it? I mean, like, people get married quick. Sometimes they don't even, it's. Oh Why do they God. do it? For the money. They uh. do it for the money. Because once you marry to somebody, you and your spouse, y'all get basic housing allowance. B-A-H. Free housing? Yes. yes. Yeah. And allowance. Yes. So, yeah. Yo, and I think I'll... it's like $3,000 a month. So, me and my battles, yes, we talked about it. It was like, we're going to get married. Like, um, you know, you you feel me? But yeah. never done it. But I mean, it's it's time. But, I mean, but it, you have time to do it. But, yo, like, I, yo, I ain't going to hold you, bro. <laughs> if y'all see me just disappear for 75 days one day, it's because I done enlisted. Because this shit crazy. <laughs> Um, so could you, if you had the choice to marry someone who's in the military and not in the military, what are you choosing? Hmm. Just 
probably, I mean, it just depends. You bought your money, Chessie, so I know you're taking military. I'm going to choose somebody in the military. I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to lie. But, okay, let me throw a spin on that. You have the choice to choose someone who's in the, mil in the military. You get the benefits. Mm -hmm. You like them. You don't love them. Or you have the choice to marry somebody who's not in the military. You won't receive the benefits, but you're head over heels deep in love with them. What are you choosing? Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of hard. But if I love someone and I'm going to get married, like, I don't know, y'all. That's a hard one because I don't want to get married to someone and be stuck into something, make the wrong decision. With the person in the military, like, I'm just in it for the money and stuff like that, the so, benefits, I mm -hmm. probably won't be happy. Even, unless well, I said we just, you liked them. Maybe you can learn to love them. But the thing is, a lot of people say that marriage is a business anyway. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the military. You know, I mean, listen, you know you'll be better off with the person in the military as opposed to the other person. Mm -hmm. You you know you'll be taken care of. You'll be right. better off. You ain't got to. So it's basically like asking, would you rather be in love and kind of have to worry? Mm -hmm. Or would you not be in love? And you know you're taking care of business is handled. Yeah. I'm taking the business. Yeah, I'm going to take the business too. I'm not going to lie. And now, then... the, now, the second question to that is, would you be loyal? Loyal to the soil. <laughs> I mean, look, like, if we already had a conversation, I'm a, if we already had a conversation, like, look, we doing this for the business and stuff like that, I'm going to be honest with you because it's like in the law that we're married. Our papers say that we're married. You feel me? But it's understood that y'all just kind of... Doing it for the... You know? Yeah, yeah. But I if that's my husband, I'll be loyal. That's a tone that you just used that I haven't heard for the past 15 minutes. So I don't know if it's sincere, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I will take your word for it. Um, so are there like physical requirements today that you have to like, uh, like when you go away once a month, like is there any mm -hmm. anything physical you have to do? Like what's, what's that about? I mean, like we do PT and stuff. Okay. Every um, year. Mm -hmm. You got to do PT, a PT test, a physical test. It's um, been changing like for the past couple of years. The most recent one you've been to, what did you have to do? <clears throat> um, You got to do, for the females, it's different from the males. I don't know the male standard, but female standard, you got to do at least 20 push-ups in um, two minutes. And you got to do 53 sit-ups in two minutes. And you got to run two miles in less than 18 minutes. Nine minute miles, that's not too bad. Um, so outside of that, like, do you? I saw a post, mm -hmm. gym life, you're in the gym. Oh, yeah, yeah, How's I love going? the gym. Like, gym make me feel happy. Yeah, I feel at peace when I'm in the gym. I'm trying to get them gains, I'm trying to get thick. I'm not gonna lie, because, like, like I said, when I was in the I joined the military in 2019, and when I was away eating that protein and stuff yeah. and working yeah. out every day, uh -huh. like. I seen the results, but like I said, I'm reserved, so I came home and I wasn't like, I slowly got away from those habits that I was doing every day, those good habits, like yeah. eating three meals a day, yeah. working out every day. So I seen my weight go down. Mm -hmm. So I was like, nah, then like I was stressed out and stuff. So I was like, nah, I'm trying to gain my weight back, mm -hmm. trying to get thick. So. Yeah. So is that, is that where you're at now? You're trying to get re -thick? And then, like, I done gained my weight back because I was in a little relationship stuff, and mm -hmm. they was feeding me. I guess they call it happy, happy weight. weight. Yeah, yeah. I, I gained some little happy weight and stuff. And now I'm at the point where I'm just toning it up. Mm -hmm. So you're no longer in that situation? No. <laughs> Heck no. You sure? Show for show for show. All right. So you was in a relationship. You was gaining happy weight. Here's my question. Okay, so the happy weight comes from them. Like, why can't happy weight be outside a relationship? Why does happy weight always come from a relationship? No, like, okay, I'm not gonna lie. My um, my ex, his mom, she told me that she was like, oh, her husband used to feed her a lot. Like, she was like. Don't let him, uh, I ain't going to say his name. Y'all, I ain't going to say yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah, you ain't got to. But she was like, uh, don't let him feed you all this food because I realized my husband was trying to just get me fat so nobody else liked me. Oh, was that what it was? <laughs> That's what she told me. I don't know. I always believe what the OS say because, you know, but shit, that's what they say. That's what they do. Shit. I don't know if that's true or not. But, yeah, we was always just eating. 
So her son was trying to do the same. He was trying to get you thick. Maybe it was just trying to get you thick just to make you, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Make you feel good to hold on to. And food is my happiness, though. I do love food. So It's a love language. Yeah, I love food. Yeah. When people say love language, like when I first got asked that question, I said food. I didn't know like food wasn't a love language. Like it should definitely be a love language. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you was in a relationship. You got the happy weight. Uh, so when you were getting a happy weight in a relationship, were you still working out? No, I was not working out. And see, that's that's the that's the fork in the road that I have difficulty understanding. So when women get in relationships, they get the happy weight on them, which is cool, which is good. Because if you tone that up, you will be a fucking beast. Right. But why do women wait till after relationships to start working out? Because it's like whenever, okay, I'm not going to lie. Like, just from that experience and that particular relationship, we was always, like, working and stuff. And whenever we wasn't working our little job, we worked a third shift job together. We was sleeping and eating and stuff like that. Like sleeping spending and, and freaking. Spending quality time and yeah. working. That's what we were doing. Okay. But, like, that's why I left that relationship because it's just, like, I have like other goals and things that I want to do in life. Like yeah. I feel like you, when you gain a happy weight, you and your partner should be able to go to the gym and motivate each other to work out. But yeah. that's not what type of time we was on. You right. Yeah. Could you, um, so like now that you see the vision, could you be with someone now who is not, who doesn't work out? Could you be with someone that who doesn't work out? Um. Yeah. You could? But I'm going to try to, Influence them to go to the gym. I'm be like, hey, you want to go to the gym? With They're me? not budging. Then what? That's gonna be kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Like if they're not trying to go to the gym, I don't see why. I encourage everybody to go to the gym because you just feel good about yourself. Like, why wouldn't you want to go to the gym? Like, good health, health is wealth. Like, go mm -hmm. to the gym. Mm -hmm. Like, so I've heard reasons where they say I don't want to have muscles. Like muscles, I don't care about them. That's what I, I know. Someone that says that type of wild ass <laughs> shit. It's not just about the muscles, but yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. They're not worried about the muscles, or they may be too lazy, or they may say they don't have time. Yeah, it's a number of excuses that people can throw out there. Do you prefer like gym bod or dad bod? I don't like dad bods, but. I prefer gym bods. The fact that you said that means you're on your shit. There's women out here that prefer dad bods. No, that's they, not cute. And they, they think there's nothing wrong with that. But deep down in the soil, there's something wrong with that. Because what? They be, you know why they have dad bods? Like, I ain't going to, bro, didn't dad bods? The only reason why they had them dad bods is because they go to work and then they come home and then they drink their little natural ice or their little drink or whatever and then they get their little... Mm -hmm. Beer good mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, but why do women? Why do some women, attractive women? Why do um, some physically attractive <laughs> women say they like dad bods? Why do you think? I know why they like it. <laughs> Talk to me, I, say, <laughs> I feel like I don't know. You they do just want to like. They want something that nobody else want. Mm, That's what it is. I just think that they be like wanting something to like in the bedroom they probably want something to grab onto like missionary style and push away like I don't know that's what I be thinking but I don't really know. yeah and like the tummy to rub rub across something I don't know maybe that's why tummy to rub across something wait are you saying like rubbing a tummy across her yeah <laughs> yeah is that what you say that's yeah I didn't see like I don't heard different. people Have you, say that uh, and stuff that's <laughs> A friend, you know a friend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> yeah. That's different. Okay, so you're saying it's something for them to grab onto, maybe something to keep them warm in a in yeah. the winter and keep them shade in the summer. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, that's me that's personally, I just like somebody that's not looking all straggly, like you stressed out and stuff, like look healthy, you know, tone your body up. Somebody that, you know, look like they care about they so yeah. So my synopsis on the situation is I think some I think women that say they like dad bods is because they want something that other women don't want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Oh I, yeah, that's a fact. I think like they don't want that cuz when you know 
when women get a dude, like they they want him to be for her and her only, which she can be. But if it's pressure from other women, then it's pressure for her to be on her shit. It's just like I get what you're saying. That is a fact too. Cause yeah, my mom be telling me that all the time. Like I'll be like, you think he cute and stuff? She'd be like, yeah, like he cute and stuff. But what you think? Other girls think it too. So see? that's a that. But like see, piggyback on what you say is like. But it's just like it's a standard. If I'm goddamn looking good and stuff, I'm not about to be with no sloppy dad body ass dude. Mm-hmm. You could you could curse on me. You could say nigga. Well, no matter of fact, my grandmother say I curse too much. So I try to I try to not say nigga as much or fuck. I'm trying to take nigga and fuck out of my vernacular on this podcast. Nigga, I mean, I used to say nigga a lot, but yeah. it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable when I'm in uniform. Ah, oh. around my. You know, Caucasian yeah. battle buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my Caucasian friends. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, nigga, old heads hate that we say nigga. Mm-hmm. And and then I tell them, because anytime I'm around old heads and they have that debate, they get very emotional when they talk about it. They say, and these young motherfuckers <laughs> keep saying nigga. Disrespectful shits. And I'm like, and I have to intervene. I'm like, listen, old heads, I love y'all, but... Nigga ain't disrespect. We, cause you gotta understand, we on a, we are on the tail end of nigga. Like we didn't go through segregation. You yeah. know what I mean? They mm-hmm. went through segregation, so they were called niggers. Yeah, nigga, and that's a different. Yeah, that's a whole different word. Whole nother ball game. Nigga yeah. came from us flipping what they called us out of disrespect. Us taking it and flipping it. And turning it into slang amongst ourselves. Yeah. But it derived from the root word nigger, which is the reason why older black people don't like it. But we don't see that because we're on the tail end of it. So we just got on. We As soon as we came into the world, it was on the, we use it as slang, as a greeting amongst ourselves. But they lived through the negative side of it. So they will always have that negative burden attached to that word that yeah. we don't have. That's why younger people and older people can't really see eye to eye on the word nigga. Yeah. That's why we use it so loosely. And it's like, yo, it's no disrespect. But they see it as us disrespecting ourselves because it came from a disrespectful word to begin with. Yeah. That's why I don't like, um, um, I mean, I say nigga. I talk, I say niggas yeah. and stuff like that. But if I'm around like some Caucasian people, I got Caucasian friends. I love y'all. Y'all can't say that shit. Nah. <laughs> I don't care if it's nig- like nigger, nigga. So you you so can't say a, nigga. If a song come, you, you need any more of this? You good? Um... Yeah, you need, you, oh, yeah. Cup, you need some more. That cup empty. That cup empty. You need some more. So you're the type when you're around your Caucasian friends and the song come on with nigga, like, do you like look to see if they're gonna say it? Yeah, uh, I definitely look like you better not say that shit. Yeah. Cause Thank I mean, it, it 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 it's like, and then here's what I don't like about the word nigga. This some nigga shit, y'all. Nigga shit, nigga shit, nigga, nigga, nigga shit. Have you ever seen Sorry to Bother You? No. It was a weird movie, but he was singing that. But here, here's a when it comes to that. Here's what I don't understand. You see videos with like white people or Hispanic people fighting, and all you hear is nigga. Mm. Like, what's up, nigga? What's up, nigga? Like, I don't like that. That's cringy as fuck. Yeah, I don't like that non-black people take nigga in like violent terms and they have to use the word. Yeah, like. Cause it's like, yo, say something else. Yeah, I don't say know your what word. you can say, I, but yeah, I don't I don't know y'all slang. Primo the fucking shit. I don't fucking know. Don't say nigga. Yeah, and I don't understand. Like, see, that's what pisses me off. Because it's like, okay, now you're only kind of categorizing it with violent shit. Violent, yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, weird. It's very weird. I don't understand that. And I hate seeing videos, usually fighting videos, where white people or Hispanic people, they're fighting, and all you hear is nigga. Yeah. They're not saying it on the regular shit. Yeah. My favorite <laughs> my favorite one, and it's, and it's kind of contradicting what I'm saying, how I don't like it, but when a white boy was like, and nigga, you told me you ain't had time, but nigga, today I got time, cuz. You ever saw that video? Mm-mm. I would play it, but I don't feel like going through all that, but fuck it, I'll play it. <laughs> it's funny. We got time. Are you in a rush? No, I ain't in a rush. We're vibing. I told you it's a vibe, right? Just vibes, man. Day by Day Podcast is a vibe first, podcast second. I'm fucking with the podcast. We vibing. Thank you. I'm really glad. good. After. What's the name of this? LaMarco. I don't even know. So $15. this. $15. Bel Air 40. And this dude 
that the same thing that Bel Air do plus more. Plus more, and it's it's much smoother than Bel Air. Listen, I'm not even a paid. This isn't even a paid sponsor. I really shouldn't be doing this, but the fact that I'm <laughs> trying to get a a wine or champagne sponsorship, I'm gonna do this to show my future sponsorship. How well I'm going to put you on. This shit right here, nigga, this shit right here is empty. <laughs> and we're only 30 minutes into the episode. I don't episode. know how that happened. I don't either. We're only halfway through, but it's empty. But let me tell y'all, straight out of Harris Teeter, $15. This, I can't do an episode without this. I don't want to sound like I'm dependent on alcohol because I'm not because I'm not drunk. Yeah. Slightly right. tipsy at the most, but this shit right here is that... Shit, you see the bottle gone 30 minutes since the episode is very... You don't have to mix it with no orange juice. You don't have to make mimosas, nothing. Very smooth. Yeah, for sure. Very smooth. So that. to my future champagne sponsor, you know what I mean? You're going to get that plus a good 30 seconds more of me hyping you up. So that's what you should get with me. So here's the dude that said that today I got time, cuz. I know I got service. What the fuck going on? Oh. I don't fuck with you because you disrespecting me. You disrespect my hood by telling me to take off my flag, asking how gangster I was, nigga. You lucky on that day I was acting cool, cuz. I told you I ain't got time for that, but nigga, today I got time, cuz. I would have smacked this but shit who on this nigga. Who the fuck <laughs> is you talking to? You talking about some nigga, cuz, nigga, cuz. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> ain't about to do shit. This nigga said... But today I got time, cuz. <laughs> Disrespect me, boy. Shut the fuck up. Fake ass B rabbit. Oh, shit. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, people always gotta. And then it's just like, he only doing that shit around his group of people to mm -hmm. prove that he hard to them. You won't do that shit around a group of niggas. Like, what oh, the fuck? Hell no. They gonna be like, nigga, what? If he was dolo a group around a group, hell no. Come on now, you know. Yeah, come on hell now. No. So yeah, I don't like that shit. I like your accent. What it sound like? Like a southern. It sounds like a southern girl accent. Thank you, because a lot of people they be like, you country. Yeah, that's a compliment. I used to be like, oh. Let me tell you something. As a northerner, even though technically Maryland is south of the Mason Dixon line, technically I'm a southerner, but. It doesn't, Maryland doesn't feel like the South at all unless you go to the Eastern Shore, but. You from Maryland? I'm from Maryland. You want to know something? My family is from Maryland, but I don't know all of my family. My family is scattered out, but on my mom's side, my mom, mom mm -hmm. was born in Maryland. Do you know what part of Maryland? No. Yeah. I do not know, but the, the last name is Hill. Hill? Some Hills. I know any hills, no. So my grandmother's side is from Eastern Shore, Maryland, which is country. Mm -hmm. My grandfather's side, he's from Alabama, but he migrated to Baltimore when he was a young boy, and that's where he was raised at. Um, but I don't know any hills. If y'all know any hills in Maryland, I don't know. Um, but that's interesting. That's what's up. Yeah, you got family from all over. Yeah, I do. But us northerners, especially northern men, like we love southern women. And one thing that charms us about southern women is y'all accent. Thank you. Yeah, because like. I used to always feel like, I don't know. I don't be feeling no type of way. But when people tell me I'm country, I don't like that shit. Well, do they say your vibe, accent, or both? Just my accent. Not my not my vibe or nothing like that, because a lot of people say, "I don't know why I always click with people that's from up north." Like it's because it's because opposites attract. Like Southern, I'm telling you, like even Beyonce Except said for it. the females, I don't know. Men up, I, I, that's I what don't I'm know. saying. That's what I'm saying. Southern women attract to Northern men. Like yeah. we, yo, like I've listen. Sorry. It's just like me personally. I'm an aggressive female. I'm not a soft female. So I mm. feel like the up north women. They mad aggressive, so when they come across another aggressive yeah, female don't, from don't click. down, that's south. a positive and a positive. A positive <laughs> attracts a negative. Yeah, like southern women and northern men, like we like. I, listen, like it's it's different. I'm choosing y'all all day. Shit, that's that's like a third of the reason I moved out here. To be honest with you, the southern women. I'm not even going bullshit. It's just like a third of the reason. Cornbread fang. Cornbread you know what I'm saying? Oh my god. Yeah, real southern eats. That shit you eat different. Chillings? I don't eat chillings. I used to. Do you eat pear feet? I don't. Do you still eat that? 
See, okay, then yeah, you are a country. I used to. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't indulge anymore. I'm not gonna lie. Like with me being in the gym and stuff like that. Like I'm trying to cut back on the pork and the beef. Eat more chicken leave and fish. Leave the pig alone. Beef but, is cool every here and there, but leave the pig alone, Chessie. I'm trying to tell you. Maybe I mean like I ain't gonna eat it every day. I don't even gonna lie. My mama cooked pig feet Sunday. I, that was random as fuck. I ate two of them with some hot sauce and some pepper. But I'm a. I'm gonna just eat it on holidays. I have to. Okay, so what's that, like three times a year? Four times a year? Not, so quarterly. You'll eat it quarterly. Twice. Twice a year? Thanksgiving and Christmas. My I grandmother, know. she always cooked. She cleaned her chitlins. House be stinking and shit. I was going to say, I know the crib on Thanksgiving be jamming. Yeah. <sighs> That was the worst part about chilling. See, my grandfather, he's originally from Alabama. He's a mm-hmm. country boy at heart. Mm-hmm. So, and my grandmother, honestly, because he's in short, Cambridge is, is country as hell. So, when they used to make chitlins, that shit used to wake me <laughs> up out my sleep. Ooh. God. I don't know. And then you want to know, y'all are going to probably unfollow me for this shit, but <laughs> y'all want to know what I do? What you do? What I used to do when I was a little kid. What you do? I used to fucking, like, you know how, like, with chitlins, I don't know if you ever ate chitlins, but they have, like, the little juice in it. I eat chillings. I thought you didn't eat chillings. I don't anymore. But oh, I've anymore. But you, yeah. Okay, so you know how you got the little juice in it. I uh-huh. used to fix me a big bowl of chillings. You know how you get the little sample plate and stuff uh-huh. the day before. Fix me a little bowl of chillings. And then I eat them all and I would drink the juice. Slurp up the chitlin juice, juice. Which is basically intestinal juice. Booty juice. Yeah, booty juice. Yeah. <laughs> I used to. Oh, man. Did you throw hot sauce and vinegar on your chitlins? Not the vinegar. Hot sauce? Hot sauce. I did hot sauce and vinegar. For real? Yeah. I might try that this year. Yeah, try that. I've been seeing that shit on the internet. What, hot I sauce and vinegar? Yeah. yeah. I ain't never tried the vinegar, though. This might be too grown for me. Yeah, I, I thought it was good. Like I said, I remember- How I'm, old was you when you stopped eating chillings? Like 12. <laughs> I, st- I stopped eating chillings a long time ago. I Damn, tried. 12. I could, what I, made you stop? When I realized what the fuck chillings <laughs> were- <laughs> <laughs> I can count on one hand how many times I've tried chitlins. And once I learned what chitlins were and scrapple, I used to crush scrapple. You eat scrapple? What is that? Scra- it's a breakfast uh, meat. It's So scrapple. Is it like liver mush? Yeah, it's scra- not mush. I saw someone at my job pull up with mush. I wanted to throw up. It's like, you in the South, baby? I was like, yeah, I must be. So scrapple. Like- no, I don't like that shit. He was eating it with crackers. Shout out to Sweets. Shout out to my OG Sweets. <laughs> he was eating it with crackers. I'm like, what is that? He's like, oh, this is that mush, baby. I'm like, nah, shorty, I'm good. So Scrapple is a mix of different parts of pig just mixed into one loaf that you fry. Who it got chitlins? I'm sure it has chitlins in it. I'm sure it has everything in it. <laughs> Ass, toes, eyelids, everything. <laughs> but you fry it. And I will say Scrapple is delicious. I ain't never had that. Really? Who cooked that? Y'all don't eat scrapple out here? Who cooked that? Cause I want some. Try it out. Cause you're in the ball field. You eat everything else. Try try scrapple out. My um my grandfather, my uncle used to always make scrapple. Scrapple is very good, it but it's good. It's like I eat pig feet. Yeah, that's what I eat pig intestines. <laughs> I eat pig everything. Well, I want some of them I want pig, pig feet. feet. Yeah. Fuck. So you might as well go for the scrapple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I ain't gonna lie though. I tell my like all the little kids and shit on Thanksgiving. I tell them what the fuck, pig, what the fuck, chillings is. Yeah, this is pig intestines. Yeah, what do they say? They be like, ew, I don't want that. I be like, good, more for me, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was be on some other. I thought you was gonna be on some other shit. Hey yo, <laughs> good for me and my people that already eat this shit. Nah, but, I, I um I stopped eating <laughs> I stopped eating pork a minute ago. I mean, God bless, but you know I do hope that you know one day you you kick that shit to the I side. Probably will, you know. Yeah. I salam alaikum, salam salam. I'm not gonna eat pork. And you and you're 22. I really didn't like strictly change my change my diet until I was like 24, maybe. So you're good. I mean, and, and you're still young. You can kick that shit. You can kick that shit right up out you. You got time. And then you know they say that the um uh, the reason why we started eating. Um, chitlins is because mm-hmm. that's all they gave us. They said that was the bad part. They gave us the yeah. little shit part of the pig. Yeah, they don't know what the fuck they was missing. Chitlins good as fuck. You ain't never tried chitlins. Go try you some with some hot sauce. He, some people eat it with vinegar. He eat it with vinegar. Hot sauce. He used vinegar. to. He used to. I don't know, Chessie. I think they know what they're missing. 
<laughs> Don't let me be a bad influence though. You know, if you haven't tried it, just try it one time. People say it's the texture that throws them I, off. I would say this. I think you should try it at least one time just to see what's going on. I will say that. Try it one time. Why not? Right. Why not? I tried it. Like I said, I can. I think I've tried it like four times. I do love chicken liver. Chicken liver. Oh, have, yeah. You ever had chicken liver? Yeah, fried chicken liver? That was... I've only had ch fried chicken liver twice. Like I said, my grandfather, country, and in Baltimore City, it's a spot called Lexington Market, which is like... What can I compare it to? I know. It's a place up here called Jimmy's where we go get our... Me and my papa go get our sauce meat. Okay. Pig liver. Yeah, where they so, go cut the um, yeah. meat and weigh it up. Mm -hmm. So Lexington Market is like, it's a big ass indoor market in Baltimore City, downtown Baltimore City, that you have fresh foods and then you have cooked foods. And it's just different stations, different spots that you can get everything. You can just walk through and get everything. Yeah. You can even get movies and CDs and DVDs from there. Like okay. I remember I remember buying a um, Star Wars movie from Lexington Market bootleg. Okay. You know what I mean? That was like the first bootleg movie I ever bought. I was a little kid. My grandfather took me. You said that's in Baltimore? Yeah, Lexington Market. I heard they renovated. I haven't been to Lexington Market in about five, six years, but I heard they like renovated it. I think it's a little different now, but it's a spot with a red roof, a red sign, a fried chicken spot. I don't know the name of it, but it's right next to a door off of East Pratt, I believe, if anybody can let me know. But that's my mama's last name. Pratt? P R A T T. Yeah, that's Pratt Street in Baltimore. Yeah. Okay. So you do got family in Baltimore probably. Wait a minute. Yeah, Pratt it's a it's a I'm street. mixing up my family last names. The Pratt's are in um, Maryland. That's what I'm saying. Pratt Street is in Baltimore, Maryland. So it Pratt. Pr my mom's name is Shannon Pratt. Yeah. And her mom is from Maryland. Okay, so you probably got ties to Baltimore then. Deep down. That's what's up. Um, so that spot, it's a fried chicken spot. So in Baltimore, we do chicken boxes. Chicken box is pretty much chicken and fries with a slice of bread. And you dress it up, salt and pepper on everything. Hot sauce and ketchup on oh, hot so, salt, pepper, hot sauce, and everything. Ketchup on the fries. So, um, Wait, what's on it? Hot. I'm sorry. Salt, pepper, hot sauce on everything. Ketchup on the fries. So ketchup. So the fries get everything plus ketchup. The chicken get salt, pepper, and hot sauce. And then you get a slice of bread. That's how you dress up your chicken boxes whenever you go to Baltimore and you order a chicken box. I went to um. Prices Chicken mm -hmm. Coop before they close. What is it called? Where is it? It's on. Um, it's right uptown. It's a chicken coop that just closed. I think it's. It's not Prices. It's a. Damn. What the fuck is the name of it? I don't know. But there's a chicken coop I went to right before they died or right before they closed down. I'm sorry. And I was like, Yo, let me get salt, pepper, and everything. Hot sauce on the fries. They was like, What? Out here in Charlotte, I was like, what? what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, oh my fault. I was like, let me and just get Normally they just got now and give you a side of hot Yeah, sauce. I was like, let me just get three wings and fries and four wings and fries. And yeah, then, you, you gotta know. add economies yourself. Right? Yeah, exactly. They ain't no damn, was it prices chicken coop? I think that's what it's called. But anyway, um, real quick, got a question for you. All right. Well, now nah, I'll skip that. You had a birthday recently. I did. My birthday is 10, 10, 01. If I was born in 2000. If they switch the years, uh -huh. I was born in 01. Uh -huh. If you switch in the 10, and I mean the 1 and the 0, it would have been 10, 10, 10. But yeah, it's 10, 10, 01. If, so you're saying if you would have been born in... 2010 instead of 01, if you switch the 1 and oh the 0. Oh, God. Can you imagine being born in 2010? You'd be 12 years old right now. That's oh. horrible. Oh, no. Them young, them young people, they be lit. They be got in. But, like, they have no, like, social skills now. Like, being born in the social media area. Oh, no, nah, that's area, trash. Era, like, you have no social. Like, we you used don't, to be outside building saying. mud pies and acting like our yard was our house, driving our bikes like they was cars. They don't do none of that shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, you didn't get to experience that. Like, I would be shit if I didn't get to experience what I experienced <laughs> That shit was so kid. much fun when it we was, was younger. Like, it was. So much. We really used to build mud pies. Now, I never did the mud pies. What is a mud pie? Literally mud. mud. We didn't okay. used to eat it, but we used to yeah, like yeah. Act like it was cake, you okay. know? And my yard was big as hell. That was our house. We used to go in our cars and our car our bikes. That was yeah, our cars. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes we put a bottle and a little um tire to make it sound like a 
a motorcycle when you drive it. We used to use cards, like a like a deck of cards, mm-hmm. put like some cards in the in the wheel. It's like <laughs> For real? Yeah. We, we do used cards. to use uh bottles. bottles. Okay. We used to stomp them out and put them on top of the tire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then if everybody can't I mean, if somebody didn't have a bike, they used to sit on their handlebars. Or ride the pegs. Or if you didn't have oh, pegs. Yeah, pegs. Or or handlebars. Yeah. So we would do two. We would do one on the pegs, <laughs> one on the handlebars. Deep as hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why we would do that yeah, shit. Yeah, kids nowadays, they they on tablets. That's what I'm saying. Like TikTok, you must... YouTube shorts. Tablet or iPad, like it's yeah. ah, that would suck. I would I would be sick. I mean, I wouldn't know any better, so I wouldn't know what it was like, but you know, seeing the kids and that was like, damn, y'all ain't really, really get to live. Yeah. Are you old enough to remember the blockbuster days? What's that? Okay. 2001. All right. You were born in 2001. So blockbuster days were before Netflix, there was blockbuster mm-hmm. where it was a store with VHSs and DVDs that you would rent for a couple of days. I know about the red box. So imagine a store of red box. Mm-hmm. With old and new movies and games. They had games too, but mostly movies. So imagine a Redbox store. So you were introduced to Redbox. Redbox came after Blockbuster. So imagine a big ass Redbox store mm-hmm. with movies from top to bottom, old to new, that you were rent for a couple days. Yeah. Going to Blockbuster in like the late 90s, early 2000s was like the greatest shit ever because you didn't have to necessarily go to the movie theaters. This was as soon as it hit the tapes. As soon as it hit the DVDs, you would go there. You would rent out maybe two movies. You know what I mean? And then you would go home, make a movie night with your family or whatnot, and watch the new movie, scary yeah. movie, whatever. And then it was like a whole vibe. And then you would rinse and repeat. That's and- the kind of given, um, I mean, Blockbusters, I didn't get to experience that, but it sounds kind of like Redbox. Yeah. What's the word? Nogalistic? Uh, um, 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 um. You know um, the word I'm talking about, though. Uh, uh, um, not narcissistic. I'm you're, you're talking about um, Nagostic. <laughs> yeah, but that's the nostalgia. Body. Nostalgia. How do you say nostalgic. it? Nostalgic. How do you say it? It's nostalgic or nostalgia. So nostalgia is the act of it happening. Nostalgic is like that was nostalgic. That's the past tense. Yeah, like that's the vibe. Yeah. Okay. We used to, me and my uh, family, we used to go to the red box. Yeah, get movies mm-hmm. and have a movie night. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's mm-hmm. the exact same thing, but imagine a red box store. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Oh man, those were the days. They I, just had the little kiosk where you select. Yeah, and, you it know, was a but a red box store. store? It was a store, and you, y'all remember this, where you had to squeeze the sides of the VH joint for the tape to fall out. <laughs> I still remember one of the first. VH tapes I personally rented from Blockbuster. Oh, me and my mom. I still remember one of the first VH tapes me and my mom rented from Blockbuster. It was Silence of the Lambs. And we was in North Dakota because she was Air Force. So she was we were stationed oh. in North Dakota at the time. Um appreciate her for her service. Yeah, thank you. Likewise to yourself. And um we rented Silence of the Lambs. And I remember asking her, like, what is this? What is this about? And she told me it's about a serial killer. And I was like four or five at the time. And I'm like, serial killer? So what do I think of? A killer who breaks into people's houses, kill them, and eat fruity pebbles. I know what the fuck a serial killer was. I'm thinking literal cereal. I know what cereal <laughs> was. But, you know, that's just that's just the nostalgia that I have with, um, you know, Blockbuster and my first movie in Silence of the Lambs, which I eventually watched as an adult and I, you know, understood more so he was actually, you know, a serial killer, Buffalo Bill. Freak ass nigga, but <laughs> yeah. Those were the days. Those were the days. Um, but all in all, your birthday was good. I assume. What, did you do anything? My birthday people? was dope. I'm like, I ain't never celebrating in Charlotte, North Carolina. This was your um, first time. Since I, I'm, I'm only 22. So yeah. when I turned 20, I went to Atlanta. I celebrated in Atlanta. When I turned. 21 I celebrated in Houston mm. but I be on TikTok and I see a lot of people in Charlotte like they celebrate like I'm from here in the, so I don't really be tapped in like that but it was yeah. dope I celebrated in Charlotte I went to um, Split I got a section at Split Explicit yeah, Explicit nice that's the one in Music Factory yeah yeah. And then I went to um, Zodiac <clears throat> 
Saturday to okay. eat food. I was supposed to go to brunch the next day at Cloud. They got good brunch, but I ain't make it because I was too turned. Yeah. And then Friday, I had an artist showcase at uh, Raw 704 in Gastonia. Mm -hmm. Gastonia ain't got much, but in the mall, they got like, if y'all haven't downloaded the Raw 704 app, go ahead and download that. So they got a lot of shit going on in Gastonia Mall. Like, Gastonia really like ain't got shit, but it's going to come up like, Shout out to Mayor Walker Reed, uh, economic development. But he basically building stuff for the youth and my generation mm -hmm. to do. And Raw 704 is just somewhere to go. Like, they got a radio station. They got a studio. They got a um, dance studio in there. They got everything. Basically, if you create content, you feel yeah. me? And I, they had their first artist showcase my birthday weekend. So I added that to my birthday celebration. And I actually won the showcase. You won. And That's I was with winning. It came with the interview and a free studio session and fifteen hundred dollars in marketing. Damn, that's tough. I hear a lot about Raw 704. Oh, you do? That's dope. Yeah, just about half of the artists that have come on a day by day podcast. When I research them, I see mm -hmm. something with them engaged with Raw 704. Yeah. So I gotta tap into them. Um, and then like I was I was supposed to meet with somebody one day um that was wanted to have like some type of partnership with the podcast. And we were supposed to meet at the mall in Gastonia. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I just put two and two together. I'm like, okay, that's what Raw 704 at yeah. and and so on and so forth. So um, I really just got tapped back in with them because um, my homeboy of mine, he just discovered it. I discovered it like last year because mm -hmm. somebody had did a artist showcase there once before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, I didn't even know the mall was like this. It's like after hours when the mall closed, they mm -hmm. be open. You feel right. me? Right. Okay. So like, I was like, damn, I didn't even know this shit was like this. Like, this is dope. Yeah. And then this year, I never went back after the, my... Um, showcase last year in june but this year my homeboy like he went into the space and they have a podcast called keeping it g like the main thing for keeping it g mm -hmm. keeping it in gastonia because a lot of people mm -hmm. from gastonia they come to charlotte to do showcases mm -hmm. and to network and stuff like that but right. it's a lot of people in gastonia with talent and stuff like that and our main thing right now if we come together we could be just as well as charlotte or yeah you feel me? Yeah. I come from a city of hate, Gastonia. A lot of people trying to do the same things. But with the Raw 704 Keeping It G podcast, that's their whole goal to keep it in the G. Everybody come together and keeping it in Gastonia. Keep it in G. Like I said, I know a lot of people from Gastonia. And um, yeah, it definitely produces talent. You, you said you come from a city of hate. Is that what you said? I do. Okay. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the music for a second since you mentioned that. Ain't hating. Great single on her YouTube. Check yeah. out her YouTube, sure Chazzy you Ree. Chazzy Ree, yeah. I got the official music video out right now. It's hot. They actually got the most views on my YouTube. I ain't know. I mean, I know I blanked on it, but I ain't know it's gonna go crazy like that. It said like 10K. The, yeah, they ain't hating. Yeah, yeah, they got they got 10K. I haven't released it on all platforms yet. I was going to put it on all platforms, but I'm going to just wait till well, I drop my Well, it starts with album. YouTube. You Listen, let me tell you something. YouTube is the most important platform. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you that first and foremost. As someone that's trying to slowly get into dissecting YouTube and making that the main thing, the main thing. Right now, it's IG is my main thing, but I'm trying to make YouTube my main thing. Mm -hmm. That's the platform you want to get to. So it's good that you do that. Uh, but speaking of coming from a city of hate, like I said, your song called Ain't Hating. Yeah. Great song, great video. I really like the video. I really appreciate that. Yeah, like I really like the video. Like, um, that was the one with uh, you and your two homegirls. Y'all just shut it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to Ty and Dejriana. Y'all did y'all big one. And to be honest, I invited like 20 motherfuckers to come in that video. Mm -hmm. Only two showed up. Hey. And it did what it did. You feel me? We did numbers. They say you may think it's 100%, but it's really 10%. And that's case in point because literally 10% showed up. You invited 20, but two showed up, which is 10%. Mm -hmm. That is literally case in point. But shout out to them too, because they was, you could tell right. they was having a ball. You could tell they was really riding for you. They, you yeah. could tell they loyal to the soil. They was so, with you. Dejiana, the brown skin one, mm -hmm. it was her birthday. And she was going to Honolulu, Hawaii. That's what? my battle buddy. Yeah. The next day, so it was big. Like, oh, that's tough. Then I show you. I saw you pour the shot to Don. Yeah, to Don Julio. No, nah, it was Pat and Ryan Patron. Okay, so I'm glad you said that because it was a bottle of Don, 
which is a gold tequila, which is called, is that Reposada? No. Yeah, Reposada. It was a Reposada bottle, but when it came out, it was clear. Mm -hmm. I peeped that. I'm like, oh, hmm. yeah. I'm like, now I drink Reposada. <laughs> I, I've drank Reposada before. It's brown. Mm -hmm. That's clear. So you're saying it was done in there. Um, in my Blanco. In my Ain't Hating video? Yeah. I had a bottle of Patron. Inside, but Patron is clear. So you had a bottle of Patron inside the Don, right? No. You sure? That was Don that you... No, nah, I popped a bottle of Patron. I saw the Patron, but then it was a brown bottle of Don that you poured inside her joint. Oh out. no, that was Jose. Okay, okay, Jose. okay. Jose, because we did have two bottles. Yeah, my, yeah, my yeah, okay. Yeah, I knew it was Jose. tripping. Okay, the brown know. Jose. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I knew I was tripping. I knew I was tripping. <laughs> I knew I listen. I know what I be looking at when it comes to the, when it comes to the liquor. I know what I be looking. I just looking started at. drinking Don like not too long ago. Don Julio was good. It's good stuff. It's smooth. It is. You want a shot? Yeah, let's take a shot. Cause we just talked about your B day. This is day by day podcast. It's still Libra season. Shout out to all the Libras out there. You're a Libra. So are you heavy into like the Zodiac thing and yeah, all that? Yeah, kind of sort of I am. So what are Libras compatible with? Aries. 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 And Cancers. Aries and Cancers? I feel like everyone's compatible with Aries. I'm a Sagittarius. We're compatible with Aries too. Pouring up a shot, baby. Listen, if y'all are listening right now on your respective podcast platform, I truly thank y'all for tuning in, but go ahead and tune into YouTube. Like, this is a vibe. Just don't turn on, this is what all my episodes, turn on an episode, kick back with a blunt, a bottle, a glass of wine, bottle of water, whatever it is, just kick back and vibe with your boy and whatever special guest I got on the show, because every episode will be a special guest. When I mean special, I do mean special guest. And just vibe. Like, YouTube is where you should really be tuning in today by day podcast because it is truly a vibe. And that's how we're doing. Let's take a shot. Chessie Reed in the building. Cheers. Cheers. Her birthday just passed. Yeah, big Libra season. Yep, Libra. We got the Don Julio. Real smooth. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hit the Don Julio. Mm. Yeah, that shit's smooth. It is. I fuck with the Don Julio. And you can't beat the glass. Like, look at this bottle. Come on now, that's cute. This looks like some shit that like pirates used to drink or some shit. Not gonna lie, it do. Yeah, right? Like I couldn't shit. put my finger on it. It was something that was like, yeah, it was like was cute. Okay. Can't you picture Jack Sparrow drinking this? Mm -hmm. It's good oh, shit. What's the little pirate name on uh, SpongeBob? The who? Oh, uh, Captain the Flying, nah, the, not... the Flying Dutchman, yeah. Oh, the Flying Dutchman, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he gonna be pouring. Up. Right, you could picture the Flying Dutchman drinking this. Yeah. Have you seen the new SpongeBob? They changed the whole. Story I don't watch that shit. shit. Oh, okay. I can't. I can't watch the new SpongeBob or the new Family Guy because it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not. I, I, just, I just happened to see it one day and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, this? like, I don't even think it's the same voice person or yeah. anything. Like, same with Family Guy. Like, they, and well, I get it because when you run out of ideas, you have to keep going and then it's like, okay, let's just pull something out of our ass. But the originals is, is you know, what really matters, what I'm about. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, real quick, let's talk about music. Like I said, um, well, we were talking about music. Um, what do you have coming up music wise? Coming up, I got an album dropping first of the year, January first. And the name of that album is gonna be Pressure or Who Said I Was Done. I'm gonna do a poll. Mm -hmm. Them mm -hmm. names uh, I ain't decided yet. Can I can what I put think? can I put my vote in right now? Yeah, go ahead. Can I put my day by day vote in? Vote, so yeah. I do my research. Um the Ain't Hating video was so what the fuck you mean came out after Ain't Hating. Yeah, I don't like my numbers on that shit. On which one? I was slept what the fuck on. you mean? I don't know what the fuck you mean. I, I did it 10. It takes time. It takes time. Yeah, it takes time. And like a like a little spin. Then that what the fuck you mean? I thought I really snapped. I think that's my best song. I mean, honestly, I only got like 250 views on but that shit. As a creator, it's like that. As me, when I put out snippets of podcasts, I'll put up clips and I'm like, yo, this is going to take the fuck off. Yeah, that's how I felt. Nothing. But then I'll put out videos that's like, fuck it, I just need to put something out. And it gets, 
the North Carolina joint, that shit is on its way to a million views That's on Instagram. Crazy. Congratulations to that. Thank you. Shout, shout out to Lonnie. The video was nothing without Lonnie, but it's it's going to hit a million views within the next week. I thought that shit was nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, a few people going to see it and be like, oh, da, da, da. people to this day are having full blown debates in the comment section over that mm -hmm. video. I thought it was going to be nothing. And then I'll drop something that's like, okay, this is going to do numbers. And it does nothing. Yeah. But then shit, I'm like, okay, it's going to do nothing. It does numbers. So as a creator, it's just like that. But the thing is, the beautiful thing about YouTube is it doesn't go anywhere. So as you continue to produce content, push out content, market yourself, brand yourself, people are going to want to see more of what is, who is Chezzy Re. And when they do that, when they go to the YouTube, the most recent one is what the fuck you mean. And when they click on that, they're actually going to continue to look at it more. And yeah. then the views will go up. I would just recommend this. So when you do go to the YouTube page, what the fuck you mean isn't your... Main video. Main video. I would just change it to what the fuck you so mean. So which one is it? It's one from two years ago. I don't know My exactly. chosen one. Yeah. Head on the white. Yeah, chosen one. So I would change it to what the fuck you mean. That way it's more updated and they can see... Because you can see the transformation from your chosen one to what the fuck you mean. Mm -hmm. Like, I noticed it off bucks, like the transformation. So I would change it to what the fuck you mean. That way they can see where you are now. They'll be able to scroll through your pages and see where you came from, which is what I did. That's the beauty of a creator. I appreciate you, can, you for tapping me in. You a real one. I do my research. I really, truly, like, if I invite, if I, if I invite anybody to this show, it's because I really see talent. I don't invite any old you know what I mean? Rudy Poo. Yeah, Rudy Poo. <laughs> I don't invite any old Rudy Poo here. Like, I invite people that I really see talent in. So when I do that, I do research, which is fun for me. Like, I get to see where you came from, where you at now, the type of shit you talking about. I get to see that, which is fun for me. So that was nothing. I really see the growth. Like, I seen you at 19, 20 years old, 19 years old, and then seeing you at 22, like, or 21, because you haven't recorded one since you turned 22, but 21. And I see it's a vast difference, but you, mm -hmm. people want to see that. That's the thing. Like, your, your yeah, audience, bro. yeah, your audience wants to see your growth. People think that they have to start out at the top. Mm -hmm. Your audience wants to see your growth. Me, with this shit, I started out in my mother's basement with my iPhone recording and a just picture him in the background with some regular ass microphones. That's literally where I started. Yeah. But I know that people want to see where I started to where I came. That's why I keep my old videos on there. Not gonna lie, that's what makes me want to. Um, you ever seen Hannah Montana? Mm hmm. Yeah, for sure. But you know, she like Molly, but when mm -hmm. she go on stage, she be Hannah. Mm hmm. So, like, that's how my life be feeling. But. Like, when I put on my wigs and stuff like that, Talk to I'm him. Chazzy Reed. Like, right now, I'm Chazzy Reed. Yeah, Chazzy motherfucker. But I have locks, like, yeah. Okay. I have locks. So, I, I saw that, and I was like, okay, did she cut the locks? So, you have locks. Yeah, my locks. Yeah, they up under here. I'm a hairstylist, so this shit, you can't really tell. But I have locks. And part of me want to start doing videos, or wish I would have done videos with my lock so you can see my growth. Mm -hmm. But So videos day. from here on out, show your locks. Maybe. Shake your dress, shake, shake your dress, dress, shake your dress. Your dress. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, my birthday was in the club, that song played, I had my wig on, I was like... <laughs> you was mad as shit? I was like, you let me take that my, bitch up. My uh, goddamn brother got dress, I was like, shake your motherfucking dress, goddamn, I can't drink, shake mine right now, shake your motherfucking dress. <laughs> hey, nah, yeah, I think you should, I think you should rock out with them, you yeah. know what I mean? Rock out with those shits, man, for real. Um, okay, so the new album on the way, so which one do you think? Who said I was done or pressure? Oh, I'm glad you brought that back up because I definitely digressed from that. Um, who said I was done? And the reason why is because, like I said, when I went to your YouTube page, I saw music videos from two years ago. Boom, 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 boom. I saw a gap, then I saw music videos from two months ago. So that's a year and 10 months gap. Yeah. So you should, and you also said in the what the fuck you mean video, you was like, 
um, and I'm paraphrasing, it's saying verbatim, but you were basically saying like, Chessy, it's time to take this rap shit serious. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. it was a small gap. Chessy, if you want this shit, you got to get it now or never. Come on now. So you really had to talk with yourself on some, okay, it's time to turn up with this rap shit. Yeah, for sure. Right? Because it was a gap and people didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So you had to talk with yourself. It's like, it was just time to turn up. So I think you thought I was done makes the perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to take that into consideration. I'm leaning more towards the who said I was done, too. Yeah. So stay tuned for that album. Who said I was done? I'm going to do an um, album release party at Raw 704. Well, when you do that, let me the fuck know so I can yeah, pull you up. you definitely should pop out. Yeah, I'm pulling up. You know what I mean? I'm going to show my support and whatnot, and we we going to be live in the building and all that shit. Yeah, we lit. We mm-hmm. are the culture. Mm, we are we are the fucking culture Desi's knocking at my door so I guess that's a sign to wrap it up she's a fucking menace but um, listen I'm so glad you pulled up I'm so glad we had this talk Uh, like I said this is a vibe first podcast second you know what I mean did you have fun did you enjoy yourself yeah I really did thank you I appreciate you for inviting me out you know I told you like I've been writing down my plans and stuff before my album and stuff I just want to Show people that aren't working so they could have something to look forward to. You feel me? So yeah. you just hit me up. It was perfect time. And I mm. wrote that down in my notebook. I literally wrote down interviews, like get interviews, mm-hmm. and then behind the scenes in the studio. Mm-hmm. Then the next day, you DM me. I was already scoping you out. Yeah. You feel me? Likewise. So, I mean, like. Yeah. The universe is crazy, so I yeah. appreciate you for reaching out to me. My my take on that is I think God and the universe work hand in hand. The way I look at it is God is the almighty high. Yeah, the most high. The most high in the, the universe. I, I look at it as God controls the universe as a puppeteer. You know those people that have like the puppets with the strings and they control like this? I think God is the puppeteer controlling the universe like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that was, you know, God just working yeah. and moving the universe as he did to make For this sure. shit happen. That was definitely God's plan. So Absolutely. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, yeah. day by day. <laughs> like I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Chessy Reed. Because, I mean, listen, my interviews are only as good as my interviewees. You know what I mean? And um This is great exposure for the, me, for the both of us, you feel me? This 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 platform is a help me help you, help me help you. That's what this platform is. That's what is. my drill sergeants used to tell us. Really? That's what they used to tell us. Literally? Help me help you, trainee. Yes. We wasn't soldiers yet, so they called us trainees. Right. So right, they used right. to tell us, help me help you, trainee. Wow. That's what my drill sergeant used this to This is so us. full circle that it's blowing my mind right now. Like, this is so full circle that is literally blowing my mind right now. Like, looking at this picture of Nip, looking at you right here, hearing the shit we talking about, just looking at everything. This is blowing my fucking mind right now. So, we got to get out of here before I have a fucking aneurysm. <laughs> Everyone that's tuning in, I truly thank y'all for tuning in, whether you're listening or watching live on YouTube. Again, if you're listening, click over to YouTube, man. Check out the visuals because this is really a vibe. I want you to get the full effect. So, make sure that you tune in, watch it, and just vibe out with us. But regardless whether you're listening or watching, I truly thank you for tuning in. I just ask that you subscribe, like, share this out, help build the algorithm. But most importantly, subscribe. That way you can be kept up to date on every new episode. Um, But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, let me say this first off. Chesie Reed in the building. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She said the biggest, the largest. The largest. The largest. Grande, like you say. La Grande. Um, shout out to Chesie Reed for, you know what I'm saying, pulling up, providing this dope conversation. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, y'all stay blessed, man. Peace.